BP works to cover the gusher in the Gulf as President Obama plans another visit for Friday. Investigators prepare to re-enter the messy upper Big Branch mine. And emissions rise in China despite reduction efforts. From the Energy News Center in Washington, D.C., this is the Energy Report with Susan McGinnis. Good afternoon. I'm Susan McGinnis. Thanks for joining us for the Energy Report. President Obama will return to the Gulf Coast tomorrow to look at the latest efforts to clean up the oil from the Deepwater Horizon spill. By the time he arrives, BP officials hope to have a containment cap over the leaking pipe. Coast Guard Admiral Thad Allen says engineers have made their main cut on the leaking pipe with giant shears after the saw they used yesterday got stuck. Now that cut has rough edges though so BP is making other cuts with the saws that you see here to try to smooth those out but Alan says because the main cut is irregular placing the cap is going to be more challenging and what you've got is a is a is a almost an inverted funnel that is wider than the pipe it's going to cover and in between there is a rubber seal around it I don't want to make this too simple of an analogy but not unlike the the uh, uh, the rubber seal you find inside a garden hose and then be able to put that over and get that seal to fit as good as it can, understanding that it's an irregular cut, and they'll be doing that for the next couple of hours. Now, if this is successful, BP will still have to siphon the oil to the surface. The best chance to plug the leak is still months away when two relief wells are due to be completed. They are expected to lower the underground pressure enough so that the oil will stop gushing. The new presidential commission investigating the Gulf spill will include two noted global warming experts. Donald Bosch, president of the University of Maryland's Center for Environmental Science, and former Alaska Lieutenant Governor Fran Ulmer, now University of Alaska Anchorage, Chancellor are now two of these seven members that are on this panel. They're going to work with co-chairman, former Florida Senator Bob Graham, and former EPA chief William Riley. The president said yesterday he was naming this commission so the American people will have answers on exactly what happened. After an aborted mission on Wednesday because of high levels of gas, Massey Energy teams will return inside the Upper Big Branch mine on Friday. Massey says the goal is to go far deeper into the area where the men killed in the blast were working. The Mine Safety and Health Administration says investigators won't look for the cause of the explosion until crews determine it's safe. A spokeswoman for MSHA says crews got about a thousand feet into the mine on Wednesday but left after about an hour because meters registered potentially elevated levels of carbon monoxide and methane gas. The Chinese government has imposed a tax on oil and natural gas production in one province to raise money for minority areas, possibly ease some anger at government energy company windfalls. This 5% tax in oil-rich Xinjiang began this week. The area is one of China's poorest despite billions of dollars in oil, gas and mineral production. Residents complain that most of that wealth goes to Beijing. Chinese officials say the tax will eventually be applied nationwide. Analysts say it could raise more than $5 billion in new revenue. A rise of sulfur dioxide emissions in China's air is making officials there less optimistic about achieving the country's pollution cuts. Zhang Lejun, China's vice minister for environmental protection, said sulfur dioxide emissions rose 1.2 percent in the first quarter over the same time last year, the first, time, the first increase like this since 2007. Zhang attributed the rise to a rapid increase in the manufacture of energy-intensive industrial products as China rebounds from the global economic downturn. He also pointed to a decline in attention to pollution by local governments and companies, also a drought in southwestern China. Sulfur dioxide is one of four key pollutants that China routinely measures, along with nitrogen dioxide, inhalable particles, and chemical oxygen demand. That's a measure of water pollution. Zhang says that China's leaders are aware of the environmental situation remains grave and plans to hold officials accountable. An advocacy group has named the Upper Delaware River the nation's most endangered. Energy companies have leased thousands of acres of land in the watershed in hopes of tapping vast stores of natural gas. And the group, American Rivers, says Upper Delaware is threatened by plans to drill for natural gas. It says the method they use hydrofracking threatens water supplies. The drilling industry insists that fracking is safe. The Delaware River Basin Commission announced last month that it's drafting regulations for gas drilling in shale formations and one of any projects until the new rules are established. The Upper Delaware supplies drinking water to more than 15 million people in New York, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania.
Time now for a look at some goings on around the Beltway tomorrow at 11 a.m. The American Meteorological Society has a Capitol Hill, Capitol Hill briefing on climate change and national security. That's in Rayburn. And at noon, Public Citizen and some others are going to have a protest outside of BP's D.C. headquarters. It's going to have a giant inflatable oil barrel, signs and banners, a list of charges, and a phony Tony Hayward in a prison jumpsuit. This is at 1101 New York Avenue Northwest. That's the Energy Report. We'll see you tomorrow with your latest energy news. For any suggestions or comments about our programming on Clean Skies News, you can email us at contact at cleanskies.com, and you can follow us on Twitter and Facebook. From all of us here in the Energy News Center, have a good day.